This is another video over the murder case of Ted R. Schmidt. Um, today I'm going to be talking about a letter that I had come across that Kenneth Schmidt, who was Ted Schmidt's brother, had written a letter to, excuse me, to Detective Koval. And in this letter, which was also signed by Kenneth and Kenneth Schmidt's wife, Jonna Schmidt, um, had a paragraph and a list of things on that letter talking about how Tammy Smelser, which, you know, I said in a previous video that Tammy Smelser was using the Schmidt's name. And that she was not married to Ted Schmidt at all. And that she, you know, only stayed with Ted because Ted Schmidt was making all this money and was showering her with money, pretty much, for her and her children. And... Another thing is, in this letter, there was a list of items that was in the possession of Ted Schmidt at the time, such as a gold chain, his money that he got paid that day, and just a, a numerous items, such as a, full, a Ford full-size work van. That was in Kenneth Schmidt's name that he let Ted, you know, pretty much use and have for his work. And a Monte Carlo that was also inside of Kenneth Schmidt's name that Ted Schmidt was also driving. Uh, this also includes all of Ted Schmidt's work supplies because he was a full-time painter. All of his work equipment. All of the furniture that was in the house that they had moved from Sherry Schmidt's to the house that they had when they went to the Everglades. Ted Schmidt had worked and bought all that furniture. And everything that Ted Schmidt owned that was property to him, none of the Schmidt family was able to see ever again. Tammy Smelser, Otis McMullen, Jean Rhodes, and everybody that was involved with that case, with this case, took everything from everybody and didn't care anything about anybody else felt. And what's, what really throws me over the top is that the day after, just a couple of days after, Tammy Smelser, Jean Rhodes, Otis McMullen all put restraining orders on everyone. Ted Schmidt's father. Ted Schmidt's mother. Ted Schmidt's brother. Ted Schmidt's sister. Heck, they put restraining orders on all of their children of the Schmidt family. Who weren't even old enough to do anything about the case. That right there just throws me way over the flipping top. That's absolutely ridiculous. Why are you going to put a restraining order on a whole family? If you knew the situation, like, it just does not make any sense to me. Like, it, the proof is right there. Like, how blind and retarded and stupid do you have to be? And excuse me for saying the word retarded. I'm not pointing that out to those people because I, I care. I really do. I have a big open heart. But to see the amount of BS that has been thrown into this and what these people have done to this case and to other people's cases that are very similar to our situation that's all around the world is absolutely horrifying and ridiculous. I'll even give you an example. My father's brother, my biological dad's brother, who was shot in the back here just a couple of years back, was put on TV and the case was settled. That was my other uncle. 
level. On my dad's side. What sense does that make? And I know it's been about a week. It's been about a week since this is all came down. I made a video prior to this one, but I didn't post it because there was so much going on on that day that I did not post it. And here it is a week later because I had to come to you at a time when everything is okay. Even though it's still not okay. Detective Koval had everything and all the facts and all the proofs, including from some of the EMSs that was there and everything that was brought down. Decided to continue the case and shut it just a week later. After everything came to the surface. Why? Because Detective Koval was possibly retiring and he just didn't want to deal with it no more. Or that the fact that he was paid a handsome amount of flipping money just to take the case and throw it out the back door. And that's the end of that. But yet we get all of these copies. The Sheriff's Department supposedly lose the victim advocate's report and all these pictures that was taken that was also explained in a previous video. And half of these people are still alive walking around on their own free will today with that happy, rich money while people like me suffer for it while they're living their life. It's pretty sad. It is so sad that the world that we live in just today is exactly the same. And it will never change. Because nobody has the balls to get out there and say something about it. Because you're afraid of your life being taken. Put yourself and the people's lives that have been taken. Such as my Uncle Ted Schmidt's case. And put yourself in that. Picture yourself being held in a headlock. That you cannot get out of. And the only thing that you have to use to, against the other people that are attacking you with serrated knives. Which I don't even think was just a steak knife that was involved. I think there was other weapons too. But we're not going to go there. Put yourself in that position. And then you can tell me how you feel. I want to see how you guys would feel if somebody had you in a headlock, swinging blades at you, getting your foot cut pretty much in half, getting cuts all over your legs, broken bones, fuck, like just a whole bunch of stab wounds and slices. That is just downright torture. That's worse than being in the medieval age. It's almost like you're getting eaten alive except you're being stabbed and choked to death. And maybe after he did make it to the yard, he was able to go, which, you know, I don't think he did. I don't think that was the story at all. I think they moved him, but we're not going to go there either. It's heartbreaking. My grandmother... Is still heartbroken. I'm not here for sympathy. I don't want sympathy. I want my grandmother at her age to stop stressing over this because it's it's literally taking so much out of my grandmother. So much. Something just needs to be done. God bless.